David Dodge here. Welcome to Green Energy Futures and our special mini-series entitled Chasing Net Zero. Super energy efficient solar powered homes are making waves across North America. And it's a simple but revolutionary concept. A net zero home is a home that produces as much energy as it consumes over the course of a year. Peter Amarongan built one of the first net zero homes in Canada. Yeah, I'm Peter Amarongan, president of Habitat Studio and Workshop Limited. Um, I've been building houses for way too long, since for about 40 odd years. Been interested in energy efficiency since the last oil crisis. Ground Zero for Net Zero began in 2004 with a demonstration project for the Canadian Mortgage and Housing Corporation. It was an experiment to see if Net Zero would work. Peter Amarongan built a large, experienced team and with the help of more than 45 people built the Riverdale Net Zero House in Edmonton, Alberta. It was one of the first Net Zero homes in Canada and while it wasn't perfect, it worked and the concept of Net Zero Homes was born. The lessons learned from that house were integrated into Peter's next Net Zero build, a smaller, more modest project. With the help of a client who went behind his back, they made big strides in harvesting free passive solar energy and storing it in a thermal mass. Conrad had a pretty good site and, and he brought me a copy of CMHC's Tap the Sun book. And he was, he was, he went behind my back to my structural engineering friend Andy Smith and said, you know, you can add a bunch of mass to that house really cheaply by pouring a two and a half inch concrete overlay on the floor. And so we, we did. We, we, and, and we found when we did the modeling that we were awful close to net zero and that we could, we could actually uh, get there by maximizing the passive solar potential. Amarongan has kept building net zero homes, learning new tricks with each one. We spoke to half a dozen experts about net zero homes and we found three simple rules to building a net zero home. Energy conservation, passive solar energy, and lastly, renewable solar energy produced right on the house. So, save as much energy as you can, capture as much free energy as you can, and then only produce as much energy as you need. It is impossible to get to net zero energy without very aggressive conservation. You've got to cut down the energy that's used for heating, for all of those same things, for, for appliances, for uh, hot water, um, that has to be cut back to the, to, the, to the bone. It's not just buying energy efficient appliances and reducing your phantom loads. Energy conservation means having a well insulated airtight building envelope. But beyond energy conservation, there are two big reasons why net zero has become so easy to accomplish after just a few short years. One is the, the declining cost of photovoltaic. It costs about half as much as it used to as when, we, when we first started. So that, that makes a big difference. And the second big one is, is the realization that air source heat pumps can work in our climate. Um, and part of that is the fact is, is new air source heat pumps that will work down to minus 25. Mike Turner is an engineer with Manask Isaac Architects and he designed and built his own net zero home. We went to his house to see these net zero concepts firsthand. Mike did all the conservation stuff that you need to do, like drain water heat recovery and energy efficient appliances. But he also made sure that his walls, windows and roof were well insulated and airtight. In this case, uh, we have a, a thick roof, uh, R70, if you're using uh, the, the R-Factor that you see in, in the hardware store, in, uh, and that's uh, about twice as much as a normal house. On the, uh, on the walls, about R50, which is, again, a, a little more than twice as much as a normal house. And in the windows, we have a quad pane window, which has a rating of about R8, which is, again, somewhere about two or three times uh, uh, better than the normal, uh, normal home. If you do a really good job on the roof, walls and windows, a net zero house will be so airtight that it needs a heat recovery ventilator to provide pre-warmed fresh air. So we're going to go upstairs and take a look at the heat recovery ventilator. It gives us our fresh air. We've got a very simple um, heat recovery ventilator. Fresh air comes in from outside, gets heated up using the exhaust air that comes from inside the house and exchanges it inside this box. Very simple device. and. It works really well. Energy, conservation, and efficiency. Check. 
Next, net zero homes need to maximize the passive solar design. If your site allows, you want large south-facing windows. Well, summer is a, a wonderful thing. Uh, we have a very high sun angle in the summertime for the most part, and we have a, a, a healthy overhang on the front on the south facade. The angle and the size of that overhang was calculated to ensure that for the hottest two months of the year, for primarily the month on either side of solstice, uh, we have very little actual solar radiation coming in through those windows. And so you end up having indirect sun coming in, which is glorious. Uh, but none of the, or very little of the heat inducing uh, direct sun. And of course the rest of the year, a larger and larger fraction until you reach uh, uh, winter solstice comes into the space and ends up heating the space passively. Mike also has a concrete floor that stores heat during the day and releases it at night. Passive solar systems are important, but they can only take you so far. To actually get to net zero, your house has to become a mini power plant. But it's not just about tacking a solar panel onto a regular house. Solar panels come only after you've done everything else. Well, the final thing to do is you have to make some electricity. And so on this house, we've got actually two arrays. We've got on the garage here, we've got a, f a four kilowatt array. And on the house itself, uh, just, uh, just, behind, uh, just behind me, just, just in front here, we've got uh, an eight kilowatt array for a total 12. And that, over the course of the year, uh, generates all of the energy that the house needs. And solar PV systems have come down in price so far, they now make the idea of a net zero home a no brainer. A net zero home is the perfect answer to climate change and to reducing your energy costs for the life of your home. A game changer? You bet. In less than one decade, we've gone from demonstration project to being able to mass produce a net zero home. Learn more about our Chasing Net Zero series in our blog, photos, podcast, and resources at greenenergyfutures.ca. For Green Energy Futures, I'm David Dodge. Thank you.